Winnie Maas. Welcome to today's Screen Time live interview as part of Virtual Design Festival sponsored by Enscape. Winnie, how are you and where are you? Uh, I am in, um, in Belgium at the moment, in, in, in my house in the Ardennes, and I do my Zooms today from here. You're and how am I? I mean, locked in, of course but in, uh, in communication with the office and with uh, outside of that, because it's, um, it's part of uh, reality now. So have you been in that place the whole time or have you been able to move from around a few places? No, 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 we, the, the, you couldn't go um, out of the Netherlands um, for like almost three months. So um, it was, uh, this is uh, just recent. I had, I had to repair this house. There was simply a, a cow on top of the roof of the house because I make it, made this house which is kind of half invisible. So there was one cow of the neighbors that went across, say, the border and went on top of the roof of the house. And happily, it was not a heavy guy. So we could chase him away uh, yesterday <laughs> evening. <laughs> I think that's the best anecdote, the best, the best lockdown anecdote I've heard so far. Winnie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you and what do you do? Ah, I'm, um, oh, I'm architect, landscape architect recently and, uh, and urbanist. Um, and um, I have an office in Rotterdam together with Jacob Varez and Natalie de Vries and a lot of other people and uh, uh, some satellites in, uh, in uh, Shanghai, in Paris and starting in a couple of weeks in, uh, in Berlin. Uh, to uh, to manage our work and to deal actually it's a quite a, a post-covid issue to have more satellites as you cannot travel and every time it costs, uh, causes some kind of uh, delay in quarantines so that uh, made us uh, more active in opening uh, satellites uh, these days so we make oh, architecture really? really so you're opening more local offices to get around the problems of, of sending people around the world yeah, yeah. so there's um, as we speak, um, uh, some people were locked in Taipei, so they're, they, they grew now because we do quite a lot. And uh, same in, uh, in Korea, in, uh, in Seoul, uh, where we won a competition just before COVID, is, uh, um, that happened now also to be a, a place, uh, like a small entity that grows a little bit because then it's easier to talk and to communicate with clients and with, uh, with all the st stakeholders. And I'm trying to think when was the last time I saw you, we were to ambassadors together at Dutch Design Week about three years ago now, I think it was. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun, but in between we met each other in some parties, of course, but that was, uh, uh, no, it was the ambassadorship, uh, what we did together, you and me and, uh, and, and another group, uh, or Atelier NL. Uh, at that moment, I think it was a fantastic to uh, somehow communicate indirectly and directly to each other. Uh, by that um, and through that ambassadorships. Yeah, and um, what about, we haven't seen too many events around the world in the last few months. We haven't been able to travel that much. Are things getting going to get back to normal, do you think? Or do you think there's going to be a long-term implications of, of what's happened? Well, it will definitely take another year, uh, is my guess, uh, before we have uh, the Mets in um, and everywhere and uh, yeah, still needs to be uh, uh, explored and found out. So no, it takes probably uh, a while like that. And uh, in the meantime, yeah, we do uh, with this kind of social distancing, thinning contacts and uh, doing it uh, in, a, yeah, in an improvised uh, 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 manner. And yes, it's pity yeah, because there were many of the the things, I mean, the Dutch Design Week, is it going ahead or in a kind of other kind of format? I mean, Manifesta, uh, we will do it uh, from end of August, but in a kind of uh, almost like a pop-up uh, uh, way of dealing uh, with such a kind of manifestation. Um, we couldn't build our, say, the Eurovision Song Festival in Rotterdam. And the idea was actually to make bridges between the buildings uh, so that we would stage almost like an outdoor performance between all the all the participants couldn't go along so we have to uh, postpone that also so this yeah this it's uh, it's affecting and then today i saw that jan from your office put up a story about a 1.5 meter street that you've been working on in um, hoogstraat in rotterdam to try and think of a way 
of redesigning existing streets for the current social distancing measures? Yeah, these are improvised uh, say elements that uh, deal with uh, the concept of uh, being together and having distance and uh, how to, um, to optimize that. It can easily lead also to permanence in the, in the fact that these kind of spaces that we now do, uh, where there's more green, uh, uh, where there is somehow you can be together and being on yourself, are going to be um, also appreciated in certain uh, zones. So it, 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 maybe this will be permanent, yeah. But the only, so there's uh, this idea of having more proximity uh, to uh, to green and to health and to to sports etc is definitely one ways one way of dealing with uh, the current say um, observations on health and the netherlands has always been very progressive in terms of environmental regulations and mvidb has always been very interested in those kind of issues do you think that the current pandemic is going to make those issues more important or are they in a way taking our focus off the importance of environmental issues and sending us backwards. Um, I mean, um, personally, I think that 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 when such a uh, the pandemic situation is over, that uh, it can easily lead to also to new hedonism. Eh? That's uh, um, so. But on the other hand, uh, certain parts of the agenda that were already undertaken are also encouraged by this in a way that we need therefore more green, or that we would like to have better oxygen, or that we um, yeah reconsider mobility. Uh, that this is somehow. This helps that agenda, I would, uh, I would say, um, and that's what we're trying to uh, to build upon. Mm -hmm. And what do you mean by new hedonism? That people will, once they're they're free again, they'll just go crazy. Well, there are sometimes symptoms uh, uh, <laughs> that the first moment that that the Dutch could go out um, uh, uh, to meet each other again on the street, and that uh, uh, then it leads to an explosion on. Uh, or in the parks to be together. And then they had to close it uh, in the same evening almost. Uh, and it also it led to, for instance, to, to demonstrations like the last weeks again, uh, despite that it was almost impossible to organize it. And yeah, you, you see that, that so this is not only hedonistic in terms of partying, but also uh, uh, I would say also to meet again, the desire to, uh, to share and to be together is, uh, is very strong and, and understandable. And um, has it had or will it have a long term impact on architecture, on the way that you design buildings, the things that client wants? What do you think will be the long term implications? Well, Marcus, personally, I, I, I reframe myself this week also for much speculation uh, on this matter. There are many people are are trying to uh, to say things and it's good that we think about it, but it's on, still on the level of, uh, of speculation and, 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 and uncertainty in uh, that way. Uh, there, I, we hope a little bit huh? I mean, that it might affect uh, the, the, the stupidity of cheap flying. Um, uh, in, and we, we hope that it um, might help to, uh, to, to make this agenda on a green planet slightly stronger. Uh, so that, that is, uh, but with this hedonistic momentum in my, uh, um, in my mind, then I, or in, in the general mind, I, yeah, it can be two steps ahead, but maybe one step back again. Eh? You prepared a presentation to show us of some of, some of the work you're, you're tackling at the moment. Do you want to share that with us now and, and show us the work? Okay. Um, there it is. It's always nice to see your desktops eh? um, because then you can see what we are. That actually is the desktop is the best, I'll say, uh, way of showing what you're doing in this uh, uh, in this moment. And so I prepared this talk, but in a way it would have been nicer to to share the desktop and to open up a file and uh, etc. What it would be. Um, but would you like to that I tell tell a little bit about the the, the elements that uh, that I prepared? Yes, please. Yeah, just talk through it. Okay. The floor um, is yours. No, because in in a expecting that you would indeed and, and, uh, uh, have as a starting point the COVID-19 uh, situation. Uh, I was looking back for a moment to, the, to, to a book that we made a while ago, Green Dream, where we dreamt 
about uh, greenness. And in a, um, and in a way, it was nice to see at that very moment that um, uh, that we that some of the students made this kind of dream of of say sun collectors uh, mirrors that would uh, get the sun and bring it back to one point, and then uh, you have free electricity almost, and it floated in the water next to Phuket, and uh, it was a kind of a, a beautiful image, uh, even more uh, pastiche than pastiche, but somehow it helped to convince clients at that moment to uh, to think about this and to uh, and, and to work on the kind of sexiness of the green agenda. Yeah, when I was thinking about it today, then I, and then then I was thinking, okay, what's happening um, at this moment uh, uh, when we made that kind of image for Rotterdam to make an, a depot where somehow. Uh, mirroring is not only done for solar energy, but also for enlarging um, uh, our city, basically to get rid a little bit of the claustrophobia that can uh, come into the cities and to uh, encourage say, also the reflection um, of our buildings so that our temperature uh, can uh, somehow drop or can be do it through the reflection. Is uh, that's what this has been driving that uh, that building, and it's nice to um, uh, to show the, the state of the art. I mean, you saw it on the internet the last uh, days uh, that it's uh, emerging, that the, the trees are on top, that the park is under construction, and that in the meantime uh, the skyline of Rotterdam is uh, nicer than Manhattan, and it's uh, so there's a. Uh, a momentum that I would like to share uh, that this is building is under production uh, under the conditions of COVID-19 and how to deal with all the sanitation requirements while constructing it. Um, uh, that, that is, uh, that's, I think, uh, beautiful to share and that people in a way are gathering it uh, as we speak and to, to be part of Rotterdam. And again, you can be there alone and still see a lot of people around you. Uh, this is a one and a half meter proof as an environment because it enlarges basically that perspective. So that is, um, um, uh, and in the meantime, uh, it's a, almost a floating building. It doesn't want to penetrate the water. So it uses the knowledge of the green dream. Um, with that, it also adds uh, uh, trees on top more than there were before on uh, on this site, just planted. So I think that is then a, after like, what is it? Six, seven years ago, that book that, that this is there. In the same moment, another say activity of this week's is um, uh, building this. Uh, this is the valley in Amsterdam, where we mean uh, where we construct uh, a series of towers that are pyramidic, like pyramids almost, so that you can make uh, uh, vertical terrace, uh, horizontal terraces in a vertical manner. So we try to um, to make new earths uh, by doing that and to avoid, say, the vertical plantation that is uh, uh, done by, say, colleagues of us, but to try to do it in a kind of horizontal manner so that we can grasp more water and filter it down from the, uh, the bottom to the top. So uh, two days ago, I was to the site, and you can see it here under construction uh, gradually. Um, also here, just continuing. And we can climb now the, the already till the 10th floor, the stairs, uh, the plants come in in the end of the year. So there is, um, I think, also a momentum. I always love that momentum of, of say, where, when it, it's still a crude structure in that way. It's a cru, and, it, uh, and that you can smell already what it uh, could be in the future. So also, again, trying to, um, to build on that uh, kind of agenda is what this shows. This goes back, of course, to, the, to, to make porosity, um, a project that we did in the, in the wine factory. Um, uh, showing in different places to, to make cavities as maximum as possible. Let's get rid of this, uh, say, skins that are as, as smooth as, uh, uh, as it, but try to, to use our buildings also to make these uh, pockets for cooling, for water storage and for greenery and for, um, and for social uh, gatherings. And I think the students at that moment made a beautiful, say, theories how to do that, logics, uh, argumentation, scripted it and put it into this city that I think is still nicer than Manhattan because it's like sequential right? from one step to maximum steps. The streets and boulevards are done in this uh, co yeah, with coordinates almost. And then and this coordinates manifest then also the position of that. Uh, of that uh, um. If I look now to 
uh, to that study and what we did and cavities are done i think in 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 uh, market hall at the moment uh, it's one of the symbols in the action to share uh, again in rotterdam the spaces this is before uh, COVID, that it was a uh, uh, obviously, but it uh, 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 was there. But that I would like to 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 express it as a kind of porosity uh, um, maker in a way to to um, to enlarge with our built matter even um, our, all our capacities of cooling, of being together, of acclimatizing, uh, and of getting rid of uh, claustrophobia as such. I was of course very. When I look back, the last just this was the day before. Uh, uh, we were not allowed to fly anymore. Uh, we had an opening of um, of uh, Tainan Springs uh, in um, um, and, uh, where we transformed a Chinese department store into a ruin uh, flooded with water. Uh, so uh, and to cool basically that spot and the vicinity of that spot by the water, by uh, the plantation that is yeah that's under process and the fog that will be there. And I was happily touched by because yeah you can only hope that architecture sometimes is kind of nice or that it, that people love it in that way and 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 still Marcus you have to go there and to swim and to uh, and to hang out uh, because this is a kind of place where people want to uh, to stay and you know gradually it helps to uh, that Tainan as a city also becomes more acknowledged and um, at that same moment we. And that day, um, flying back in the evening uh, with the last flight, then uh, there was a, also went to the new market hall in Tainan, where we used that market hall basically to make a new roof, which becomes the farm of that area where the products are grown and then say uh, represented or uh, sold downstairs. And this is an image of that say uh, market hall in combination with that farm roof and. The, that was that moment, uh, or not the last, uh, say the last flight um, of uh, uh, this year for me up till now, and then to, uh, to 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 walk over this roof and to see that. Looking back to this green ambition, I think uh, uh, the the knowledge on plantation we grasped and, and could bring together in uh, in Seoul, uh, um, which um, in the same trip we we weren't there not only to look to the maintenance levels, as well as to the evaluation of the plants, uh, which ones are growing. They're all there, eh? A till Z uh, in uh, Korean alphabet. And they uh, grow um, with the Botanic Institute to test what they need in artificial circumstances uh, in this collection. Well, you can see what, of course, the, the, the beauty of, uh, of certain of the species that are overwhelming, that are becoming so big that we have to transport them again, uh, otherwise, the, the, the structural engineer becomes nervous, and they uh, so there is there is um, that was what at that moment, uh, and so we were celebrating that uh, that night also in, the, in the two o'clock in the morning with um, uh, with that uh, say a presence as such, and it's nice that it now continues with extra bridges. This is a slide where soon there will be an extra bridge coming to extend uh, uh, Solu in that way to greenify you can say uh, the rest of that of that uh, neighborhood. Another example I would like to share with you is uh, uh, this one, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, Osterwald in Almere next to Amsterdam. You can make whatever you want, but you cannot harm your neighbor, and you have to contribute to uh, energy supply and to agriculture food supply. And to, uh, so every spot does that in, um, with certain yeah, ambitions and certain kind of um, say architecture, you could, and and they um, it is now nice uh, to see here some uh, landing back from um, from Taipei. You will see this uh, when you land. You see that people are constructing it. They make their own roads. They make their their. This is not a uh, not only a, a swimming pool, but also a, a cleaning device. Uh, uh, there are orchards around it. The proud neighbors at this very moment. And um, it is a lovely area now to go to, especially also in these days, people are at their homes, building it themselves, transforming that city, uh, and they have a little bit more time to do it now. And uh, it is as if a symbol of autarky uh, somehow is now um, encouraged in these last uh, days. So I thought it would be good to, uh, to share that, that it's under development, the first thousand units are there. And uh, the next phase 
this is coming soon on internet. So then you can, um, Marcus, you could come also and, and make your own house and your own uh, 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 vineyard in that way if you uh, can help us out. Um, there was a big discussion. This is an image of the Floriade, the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the garden expo in, uh, in Almere also. And we do more things in Almere on urbanistic level. And there was a huge discussion the last weeks if this is Corona proof and that were, should we skip also this World Expo in 2022. And uh, um, the costs of stopping were so high, but you really clear that, that two days ago, three days, it has been decided by the local government to go on. We put some pressure on us to make it even more, uh, to make this green city and with thousand species, every building loves one species, uh, put it in a, almost in a library way on, uh, and make it, so this is the state of the art. That is the, the last week walking around, planting trees wherever possible, no buildings yet. The first towers are, as we speak, are starting, making all these mini roads and try to make this test on this library um, uh, also uh, now. And I'm happy that they decided to do it despite this uh, Corona uh, virus and, and, and the, all the ensuite uh, uh, processes that are going on to, to make it and that we do it even in a more improvised matter, maybe even with more say energy than, than before. So that's what I would like to, to share. And uh, last but not least, I want to like to, to share also after the green dip that soon you have this on the market. Uh, sorry, the green dream, the green dip as such, where we would, you know, sometimes it's ice creams where you dip your ice cream in chocolate. No. I think it would be good to dip our planet in green and uh, for many reasons. And let's do that in a, um, say, almost scientific manner with a group of people and um, uh, with also colleagues that, that work on this uh, element. So to, to somehow um, transform, uh, hopefully in the, in the future, places like, uh, like Hong Kong into, um, into a, a, a green dream. So more Stefano Boeris than ever and more collectively done by a complete generation or to transform as uh, say uh, what the, my former jobs one could say um, uh, in Beijing to into this next generation of uh, inhibition is what I would like to share uh, today with you as a green matter. What it, was, what it wants to do is to investigate every technology that we have from say the Milanese version to the Dutch version to the French and to put them into products. I do hope that in the next design show, wherever uh, we are doing that, we can deal with that, work it out for any animal, any species as such on facades and roofs and, uh, and then calculate, as you can see here, what it does in terms of uh, CO2 absorption or in, on biomass forming, noise reduction or water protection is what it could be. And then I, I think this is my dream of uh, Fifth Avenue. And when I uh, transform New York like that, and do that collectively, including the interiors of many places, and I think we, Manhattan becomes beautiful and turns into a, a new momentum of our times. Now you can feel that we're exploring COVID that somehow becomes a, uh, a field of a tool for the future. Okay. Just some data, because I, you know I'm a data fetishist. So that's a, uh, in, if we do that for our current production, then already we can have 10 to 12% more CO2 absorption. And if we add new technologies, like here you see how we can blend uh, biological matter uh, with, uh, uh, with growing mass in the future, so roots are made by themselves uh, in, the, in a new way, and it can happen in the coming 100 years. Then this can happen, I think, in the next generation of greenification, that gradually I can imagine that these facades don't exist as such anymore, but becoming kind of transformable matter. And with that, I do hope to give even more, say, uh, uh, more, more effect on our climate uh, uh, behavior and to transform this blue planet maybe into a, into a green, green one is what I, so maybe that is what I would like to grasp today with you and uh, to, you know, to share uh, um, 
at the moment with our desks and with our people how we work on it on the situation as it is and to consider the the world after thanks winnie do you want to unshare your screen now so that last section that you showed us the the green dip is that a, is that a new body of work or has that been published already how how recent is that research that's very recent it is um it uh, took like two and a half years of research at different universities uh, like uh, Jack in Barcelona or, uh, or collaborating also with the Politecnico in Milano to, uh, to get all that knowledge together and to, and to bring it to this kind of speculative uh, format. The films are currently floating on the internet, so that is a kind of a scoop uh, of, that, uh, of that book. I do hope to show it and to bring it out soon with the opening of the valley in Amsterdam, the buildings with the, all the, uh, the, the, the green up to 120 meter high. To have it to show it there and then to uh, to bring it on the market. There have been some. There's been a, a big trend of putting trees on buildings lately, and, and some people think that's a bit superficial. It's a gesture of nature. It's a gesture of environmental concerns, but it doesn't really do anything. Are you saying that by combining architecture and greenery, you can actually solve climate problems as well as creating beautiful environments? Uh, yes. I, uh, of course, for a limited amount, in the, the, there's a lot outside of the building uh, industry and the, uh, the built environment where it, which produces uh, these problems. But um, um, here is one way of dealing with that, and it's uh, significant. Well, for instance, it will when we do it for every building in this natural uh, material, in so it's not only in, outside; it's also inside, and uh, then it would save. Two degrees Celsius um, could be, um, uh, yeah, we could drop the temperature with that um, because of the precipitation changes over there. So there is, um, uh, yeah, there is something to 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 do, and actually, it's very beautiful. Uh, also, is it? Does it have more phases, as you suggest? Like uh, uh, first, you do it simply in pockets substantial pockets that uh, uh, where these elements can grow you gradually move it to material so where it in, uh, installs itself in the facades and in the floors and where it grows over time and can be uh, can be uh, reduced with um, a certain kind of say um, influence uh, uh, that, that is the target and how far are we for that Mm, I would say 10% of, uh, of that process uh, is what we can do now. So the, the critics that you are referring to uh, see it as a, only as a dress code and uh, as a greenwashing operation. And uh, I want to prove with this uh, publication that uh, they are wrong and that they are, uh, uh, that they, in a way, the critics that were also like on your uh, website, they, um, they stimulated me in that way to, uh, to, to, uh, to try to formulate that answer and to, uh, to, I do think that whatever we make and whatever we, uh, and, and there's a lot that we are going to make in the future. And that is, uh, 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 we are going to repair a lot. We are going to uh, add stuff. We are going to change stuff that if we, and then this might help uh, a little bit to add an, a stronger agenda to that and to, to say that we, there is a lot of possibilities both in the uh, building technology, um, both in the, the, uh, as well as in, in, the, in the climate, say, management that we are doing and in the research and development that is still needed to make those products even better. So you read the comments on the zine then and they actually inspire you? Oh, every day. <laughs> Wow. Um, now, I think, uh, no, but Marcus, I think that's that's of course the dialogue that 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 you uh, as makers and uh, uh, are wishing uh, to do. And I think for me as a as a consumer, but also as a maker, I I I think this is also my way of communication. Also, we put our buildings on the net in order to get feedback uh, and. Uh, so that can be done in a direct way and in this kind of indirect way or this more generic ways. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Press is important. Now, it's really good to hear that because we get a lot of criticism for our comments and it can cause us a lot of problems as well. But it's really good to hear that 
the people in the industry, key people like you appreciate the feedback. In terms of the greening of cities, it's one thing to put trees in cities and, and plants and flowers and, and grass and everything, but what about, what about wildlife? If you have trees, then you have birds and you have insects and the humans have spent hundreds of years trying to get rid of ants, get rid of uh, mosquitoes, get rid of anything that kind of moves and, and might, might cause um, disease or scare people or whatever. How, how do you make sure that it's not a sterile environment in the city? Very good question. And I decided not to make um, my lecture too long. Uh, by, and indeed, there was a kind of chapter that comes after the Green Dip or belongs to that. And that's the biodiversity, uh, the, the biodiverse city. That's uh, um, another research that we currently are uh, doing and finishing, where uh, these kind of products that facilitate maybe flowers or oxygen production, you can say that, but also can facilitate uh, wildlife or so it is um, organized in two ways. One, there's of course, it follows the triangle of uh, and the hierarchy of uh, the food chain uh, from say, say the tiger to the, to the bacteria uh, and how much habitat uh, uh, all these figures uh, need. Um, it tries to um, uh, sync that knowledge with uh, uh, built products that are beautiful tiles where birds nestle at the moment uh, in that way. And, and some products need, I, mean, I don't have a very good tiger canvas yet. So there is, a, uh, and try to put that on our built environment, our urban canvases. And with that, uh, we can see somehow understand a little bit uh, how far we are if we wish certain kind of habitats. Uh, of course, my personal, um, I, I, I hope that I can do a, a, this kind of Natura 2000 uh, areas in Europe that which are now completely in a lock. And I understand that but that somehow we can um, extend that basically and, and, and use also our cityscapes for this uh, Natura, not 2000, but say 2100 uh, to, uh, to extend it. And this is a nice article, by the way, for you guys, because in a way now there's a, it's completely locked the whole discussion on protection versus development uh, in the Netherlands because of, uh, the stickstuff N2 uh, uh, production, we cannot do anything uh, building anymore, which is actually quite uh, humorous and, um, and amusing uh, and uh, the indirectly productive. That will also happen, I guess, to uh, like the UK or to Denmark in the nearby future. So um, how to mitigate between that? I think there's a role for architects and, uh, and, and, and spatial thinkers and spatial makers, space makers, to, uh, to facilitate that. So that's what I see in uh, the good question that you asked the question of wildlife. I'm not sure the point you were just making there about um, the so, something is stuck. You were talking about something being stuck, some kind of initiative. What was that you were, I didn't miss, didn't catch the reference. Oh, I could imagine that happened just before um, sorry, COVID when, um, because uh, uh, there is um, uh, yeah, uh, too much, and two in our uh, environment uh, that um, uh, that kills nature. Uh, nitrogen. Yeah, nitrogen. nitrogen. And, that, and that makes uh, uh, so how to steer and deal with that. So one hand is of course to get rid of cars. Uh, that um, uh, uh, what is happening, or to, to slower the speed. What happened in the Netherlands now? Uh, and actually with COVID, it proved to be uh, very useful to uh, to slow down. And uh, to on other hand, also to enlarge nature can compensate uh, uh, this kind of um, maximization that is now in our laws, and that um, um, yeah, also to get rid of uh, a certain kind of uh, agriculture is part of it, and that led to in incredible demonstrations in The Hague, and um, um, that now how to that's in lock. So the build. Build, the building production is partly stopped in certain areas because it would harm that situation. It would, it, it's unlawful uh, to do that because of these uh, uh, lawsuits. And that um, makes um, certain economical developments impossible. So, which is fair from a, from a certain perspective, but how to solve it there, this kind of say other ways of building, which is not harming uh, this kind of production not producing that and uh, can help to uh, to go on and to, to combine that um, with this 
new two new demands, the ecological demand and the economical one. It looks like you MBRDV uses a lot of concrete in its buildings. Where do you stand on the debate about concrete? Because it creates a lot of CO2 emissions. A lot of people are saying we should use more timber. What is what is your view on that? That's horrible in a way that we uh, that we are still not that far and that uh, uh, we can do, of course, certain kind of concrete, which is slightly uh, better, like uh, um, with less Portland cement and uh, with other reusage of material. But um, we are, it is hard to convince uh, in, so we, clients uh, that way or yeah, or in the end you lose, for instance, like Gazprom building that we, uh, where we in the end were second uh, after a long of discussions where our building was, I think, on purpose for Gazprom in wood uh, to reduce uh, uh, in Petersburg to, um, I think the, the, the first floating uh, wooden headquarter building would have been made. That is, um, yeah, that's a pity. It is, um, um, you push, you, you pull back, you, you don't reach it. And I have to make a separate report on this. And um, this, this has come up in some of the other interviews we've done during Virtual Design Festival, the, the notion of bringing nature into the city, greening the city, creating biodiversity in the city. But what about outside the city, the, the areas that used to be wilderness, do we, rewild them and turn them back into wilderness? Or do we accept that the whole world is going to become urbanized to some extent? Is the division between nature and society and humanity non-existent there? Well, managing the planet is, uh, a, is, is probably a very human activity in that way. So even managing nature is uh, a part of our urbanism, to, uh, to say it in that way. Um, uh, it is um, clear that the management on nature is also quite, say, de developed. For instance, uh, we, in the Netherlands, the law of enlarging existing pieces of nature just to have better protection is already a design, as a, an act of design. And, uh, uh, and still we have to uh, reconquer, for instance, pieces of the desert in order to have an, a, a nature which would help to cool down the planet a little bit more. So um, uh, it is also nature, uh, the Sahara, you can say, but maybe we would like to have other kind of nature. And that's already immediately artificial in the very beginning, but to make that say sustainable is a, an effort that we for sure should do that. And how to do that is an, in the case of the Sahara, I think an, an incredible task, uh, gradually uh, doing pieces on the, on the edges uh, using uh, some of the initiatives to put solar cells, uh, solar PU uh, elements in the desert to maybe to lift them to, so that they can create shadow uh, at that moment. Uh, immediately. These are acts that can create nature that we maybe need um, uh, more in that way. And, and ultimately, we have to, to make clouds, eh? that we have to influence the precipitation in order to, uh, to bring also water uh, over there. And we have to store it in a certain way. So uh, you create wildlife, but I think it's a very ambiguous um, uh, question that you pose. And also, and, and I'll give also an ambiguous answer. Because we will be with 11 billion people soon, we will we have to manage that growth. Some of us will go to the tundras in order to, to, uh, to survive. We have to deal with that and uh, uh, with that new densities that occur. And that are, are needed also to 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 keep enough say emptiness to uh, for oxygen and water uh, management. And, and final question, because we're we're running out of time before we have to start the next stream. But do you think that we should design redesign the whole planet? Do you think that we need to scale up our ambition and think about the whole planet as a design problem that needs to be solved holistically? Yes, for sure. But it's, um, um, there's only a small ball, uh, which, uh, this small sphere in, in the cosmos with such a kind of um, yeah, highly uh, vulnerable um, uh, composition that um, even if we make toilets or one of us makes toilets, that it, when it's mass produced, it has an effect on that uh, entity. So um, from 
the, the smallest to the biggest, they influence uh, that, that ball. And uh, somehow we have to judge our activities on, uh, on that, both in short term and on longer term. Uh, and, I, and, that is, uh, no, and that is what I call in the planet making. And, uh, and uh, so it's not only describing the planet as a, as a totality, but how everything affects that, uh, that vulnerable uh, piece of art that I call uh, of the planet. And we talked about that briefly, I think, in Dutch Design Week a few years ago. And I've always wanted to do a, a design competition to redesign planet Earth, to come up with a, a vision for how the planet could be. Maybe that's something we could talk about together more. I would love to... Um, um, to, it will be wonderful to design more planets in that way and to compare them because I, there are different dreams. Um, I, it's intriguing. Um, and I think there are science fiction writers that did that a little bit, but um, what, of course, what would make sense to uh, what kind of planets would make sense and what would contribute to our thinking of, uh, uh, of our management as, as it is now, that would be then uh, the input that we need to give for that competition. So, um, um, but it would be very useful in that way to fantasize on that because it would mirror what we should do now. So in other words, design a different planet and use the lessons from that to improve this one. Yeah, I think that, uh, uh, could, uh, uh, that could help. And of course the, the situation in the, in the cosmos will uh, uh, say something about that, how could we, but say the making of a planet uh, and how that what could be a sustainable way of making a planet might help also to, to bring in the knowledge to, that we need here to uh, to be more careful and productively careful. Brilliant, Mini. I'm sorry we're out of time. It's been fascinating speaking to you. I'll definitely follow up with you about that. I'm sorry to all the people who wrote in with questions. We don't have time for them due to the delayed start. But thanks so much. I'll be in touch with you soon, Winnie. So soon. Nice meeting you again. Good luck with Take the care. cars on the roof. <laughs> I will run to them. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>